Okay, morning. All right, let's start lecture and we'll talk about the curl, um, green theorem, and divergence. Uh, so basically, we're going to talk about two different operators today. Okay. Now, just to re just to sort of re quick review here, uh, the uh, the consideration of the concept of curl started with the in an observation basically. So observation is you you have a vector field, okay. And so when you put something, let's say for example a stick into this vector field, you will observe rotation. So it's it's almost like you have a vector field, and this vector field will generate a certain kind of rotation, right? So the uh, this 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 observation, okay, and bring us to this uh, idea of this curl here. So how do we end up with the curl? Is so I started with this concept of. Uh, uh, from this circulation there. So let's bring up this thing here. Okay. So we started from the circulation to derive for the curl here. So this is what happened with what I drew in the last lecture. So there should be an equal sign in here. Okay. So let's say suppose you have vector fields in a 3D space. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't draw it, but just just uh, imagine that there's a vector fields here, right? Okay. So then we. We're gonna basically let's say I have a closed contour or closed curve at right here, okay. and this closed curve is pretty small. Let's say is a delta c using delta c to represent a curve, and the delta c will enclose a small area delta r. Okay, so let's say this is the planar region delta r at right here. Okay, yeah. Now I'm gonna uh, orient this closed curve. Okay. And this orientation of this region delta r, okay, properly. So orient properly meaning we use the right hand rule to orient it. So this is a clockwise, counterclockwise, and this is n hat. So right hand rule, okay, satisfy right hand rule, right? So this area enclosed by the delta c. So let's call it delta a, a vector. So now the area, this is an area vector here, okay. So this is an area vector. Basically, for any small area in the three 3D space, okay, not only it has a scalar value as to how much area it is, it also has a certain direction it's pointing to. Okay, so that's basically what we call area vector. So it's a vector, and then it has two quantity. One is the magnitude, the other is the direction, right? So the magnitude is basically the area itself, and the magnitude is the n hat, which is the vector normal to this. Uh, area, all right? Yeah. So now uh, here is the uh, the uh, setup for this uh, uh, for this calculating the corona. Okay. So then for this particular setup here, so this is a pretty small area here, right? So what we want to do is we want to calculate. We basically we want to see how much, right? How much of the circulation around this a uh, small curve delta c, right? So basically, if we want to calculate the circulation. Okay, which is this the line vector line integral, right? So the vector line integral around the delta c. Okay, so let's say I have vector fields at here. Okay, inside this field. So this guy dot the ds, which is the small segment, okay, of the line segment uh, around this curve c. So that's the circulation around this guy here, right? That's around c here. Okay, now. As basically as your area, okay, your delta r go to zero, okay. So imagine that. So as this go to zero, then this guy, okay, will go to zero, right? Yeah. So, but however, okay, if I if I consider the ratio, if I consider this ratio here, okay, if I consider this ratio, basically. The ratio between the circulation and this area, 
Now when delta r go to zero, this ratio not necessarily gonna go to zero. Okay? So that basically this guy not necessarily gonna go to zero. So if I take the limit here and say delta a go to zero, let's say instead of delta r, let's call it delta a go to zero. Okay, so the area go to zero, okay? Then this limit okay not necessarily gonna go to zero. You can see we have zero divided by zero right here, right? Yeah. Now this is basically a definition of so-called circulation. Okay, uh, density, right? This is the circulation density. So, density basically is always a, a concept, but it's a point concept. So, right at this point, you know, how much of a circulation that is going to be, right? So, that's the circulation of a density here. So, this guy here is called circulation okay, density. Okay, circulation density. And then the curl, okay, this, this curl concept is defined as this. So now there's this definition, okay, of curl, okay, curl F, okay. So the definition curl F is this. So the curl F, okay, this is a curl, uh, curl, so, okay, curl F dot n hat equal this one here, okay. So I will explain this what the mean city here, okay? But first of all, okay, here we have uh, there's a new definition here, basically it's called curl F. Okay. Equal to this circulation density. So let's let me explain this what, what uh, <coughs> this definition are doing at here, okay? So uh, using language here, basically what is saying here. When you use a curl f dot n hat, first of all, you know you can use two. You can you, you can only have two vectors dot each other, right? Okay. Then what what that means is the the curl f here basically this is a vector. Okay, this is a vector here. Okay. So f is a vector field. Then curl f give me another vector. Okay. Yeah. So then if I if I this location I have this vector field and it has a certain uh, magnitude and a certain direction, right? And the different location, different magnitude, different location. Then, if I use a curl f that operator right here, then I'm gonna get a different, basically, sort of vector fields again, right? Yeah. So what this does is stop part. What does stop part? Stop part meaning is what? Projection, right? It's projection. So when you use a dot b, it's a projection. So the the projection of this vector in the direction of the other one there, right? And this n hat is a unit vector here. So basically, this is the projection of this vector in the direction of n hat. Okay. So maybe uh, the at this particular location. So as delta a go to zero, you you were basically looking at this point p at here. Maybe at this point P here, and this is the direction of a curl F. Okay, this direction curl F. And then when you use this curl F, okay, dot n hat, okay, it's basically project this one onto here, and then you got a, a magnitude in this direction here, right? And that magnitude is this circulation density. Okay, so that's basically what this uh, definition here means. Yeah, sorry. You zero. That's right. Good point. Yeah. So now, what this does, what this tells us, I'll, I'll tell you what this delta is uh, just shortly here. But um, the curl f dot this in hat equal to the circulation density. Was that clear? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now what happens is right. Maybe I'll, if I go back over here, let's say okay. Uh, this is a curl F. Given a vector field, you'll be able to calculate the curl F. I'll show you, we'll, we'll tell you what the equation is. Now, this is the n hat. If I change this n hat, maybe if I change the n hat to some other direction here, then this curl F dot that different n hat will give me a different circulation density, right? So that's basically uh, what the usage of the curl F here is. Okay, and where this circulation density from? It's it's a it's calculated based on a circulation around a small curve, which is very sim very small around the point P. So now what happens is you you can imagine this is the case here. You can imagine yourself if I put a very small uh, this is what this is called a straddle wheel, okay, uh, a pedal wheel um, into this vector field. It's like you're holding a measurement device in the air trying to measure the uh, wind speed, 
Okay? Yeah. Then what happens is if there is a circulation around that area in that direction, right? Then you would expect this pedal wheel to what? Uh, to spin. Does that make sense? Yeah. So and of course, then you will see if the circulation density is zero, then there is not going to be any spin around that uh, location. Is that right? So you you, you put it over there. There's no spin, so wind speed is zero, right? But but if you change the direction, maybe it's going to spin. So that's basically <coughs> basically the idea of this crow dot and hat at it here. All right? Yeah. So. Whether the vector field is going to give us a give us a rotation or not, so you can use this definition to calculate. Okay, and of course, if a curl f is zero itself, then it doesn't matter. It dot any in hat is still going to be what? It's always going to be zero, right? So that's basically this this thing in here. Now the question is, uh, how do I calculate this curl f here? I think that in the last lecture I, sh I, t I told you already. I said curl f basically is del across f this guy here, right? But that's not very rigorous proof here, so again, because I told you that. So there's actually, you need a little uh, more rigorous steps here to derive, okay, what exactly is the expression of formula for curl f, okay? So I'm not going to derive it here, but I'll tell you, and uh, uh, you can take a little lecture, I'll to show you the roughly the steps here in terms of the capturing the curl f, okay? So this is basically uh, the idea here. So curl F <coughs> curl F give me a vector. So then if it's a vector, then I must have okay, it's three components in 3D space. Let's say use a 3D space example. I must have this there's I component, I hat component here. I hat and plus a G hat component. Okay. And key head as a G head. And plus a key hat component. Okay, key hat. So if it's a vector, then it must contain three components, right? Must contain three components. So the question is, what are the three components here? Okay, so then how do I calculate the three components? We calculate the three components based on the definition right here. Okay, based on definition. So <coughs> what do we do is you see curl f dot n hat give me a circulation density, right? Now if I want to see if I let's say I'm gonna use it, I want to I want to calculate the I want to find out the key hat component for this curl f. So then what I do is I guess I'll have the curl f dot key hat. What does that give me? If, if I dot key hat, it's gonna give me this key hat component. Right to see dot product when you use a dot when you use this dot product when you use this vector dot this key hat, what does that give me? That give me this key hat component here, right? That give me this key hat component. So this key hat component, according to the definition, that equal to this uh, uh, the uh, uh, cur the uh, uh, circulation here. So F D S over uh, delta A, right? Limit. Here, delta A goes to zero. Okay, is that, is that, is that good? So now let, let, let's 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 get this concept right here. Okay, because yeah. uh, remember the formula is actually quite easy. Okay, first of all, this is a curl F. Okay, it's going to be a vector in you know, having three components, and I'm trying to find each one of the component here. Finding the component meaning. If I use this one dot this key hat, I will get this key hat here, right? Okay, and this is actually exactly the definition here. When you use this dot key hat, okay, you get the circulation density, and this is the circulation density when you which direction in the n hat direction here, right? In the n hat direction. So in this particular case, if I dot the key hat, then this guy here will be the circulation density in the key hat direction. Okay. Now, what is the relationship? You go back here. What is the relationship between this n hat and the delta a? The n hat is what? Is the yeah the normal vector to this delta a here, right? Yeah. So unit normal vector to the delta a. Okay. So then, and the delta c is the uh, the the curve enclosing this delta a here. 
So now if I go back over here, okay, so delta A at here and the key hat, what is the relationship now? The key hat is the uninormal vector to this key hat. Okay, so this key hat here, okay, is this uninormal vector okay, to delta A hat, okay, to delta A hat. Yeah. I'll just say delta, delta A, the delta area delta A here. And delta C, okay, is the curve okay, enclosing <coughs> delta A, okay, right? So that's the relationship between, uh, based on this <coughs> equation right here. So now I'm going to basically just basically using this idea here to calculate this k hat component, right? Okay, so if delta A is an area having a uninormal vector k hat, so which means the delta A must be, what's the relationship between delta A and an xy plane? Parallel, that's right, right? Because del delta A has a key hat univector in the direction of Z. So this delta A right, must be parallel to the xy plane. Okay? Yeah. Or maybe you can just simply put this delta A in the xy plane. Right? Yeah. So this is why what we do is, okay, so this delta A must be parallel to this uh, xy plane. So we take a small rectangle here. So just use a small rectangle to uh, to approximate this delta A here because delta A is a small area, right? Yeah, and previously we used a circle, but in this case here, we, let's use a rectangle here, okay? Now, use a rectangle then, it's going to have four corners, okay? So the four corner, let's use this corner here to represent, you don't have to do this, you know, it's all in the lecture notes here, okay? I'm not going to go into too much details here, but Here's the idea here. So you use the rectangle, then this rectangle has four corners. Each corner has a, a coordinates here, right? Yeah, that's in 3D space, okay? So as you can see, the Z component are not changing, right? Yeah, it's the same Z, okay? So now, what we do is, basically, we're calculating this circulation, this line integral. And this line integral over which curve? Over this delta C. Right? So then we basically, this one has what, how many? One, two, three, four segments. So we're basically we're going to calculate this line integral over this line segments here. Okay? And then divide it by the delta A. Then take this limits here. And that will give me this k hat component. See the idea here? Right? Yeah. And of course, it's quite easy to see delta A right here is going to be delta X, delta Y. Okay? And that's delta A. And the only question here is, what will be this line integral around this rectangle here, right? Yeah. So uh, the uh, I'm not going to go into detail, but I'll just give you this initial uh, initial formula right here. Okay. So line integral over the delta c and f okay, ds. Okay. So we're integrating from here to here, from there to there, like this, right? Yeah. Now, now the only thing is. Remember, huh? This is a very, very small rectangle. So each line segment is quite small here. Okay, it's quite small. And uh, we can use a vector to represent each line segment. Okay. For example, if this is a p x y z, so the coordinate here is x y z, and the next one here is x plus delta x y z. Right? Yeah. So then, the vector from this point to this point basically it's this coordinate subtract this coordinate here. Is that clear? And that gives me this delta x i hat. Okay, can you see this? Yeah. So this is why basically see this is the why delta r1, this portion here is delta x r hat here. Okay? Now because this is small here, so instead of actually you carry out this whole line integral here, you can use a little approximation here, okay? You can use a little approximation. So this f dot, this ds here, you can, the, for the first segment, okay, so there's, there's this uh, c1, c2, c3, so c1, c2, c3, c3, and c4, right? Through four segments here, okay? Four segments. And the first segment, OK, 
Okay, for the first segment, which is this from here to here, it's a very small segment. So what we do is just f dot that delta r1 here. So just f dot r1 here. Okay, that's approximation, right? It's like your integration. If you, you're integrating f, okay, over a very small segment there, okay, it's a very small. If it's if it's a, uh, the uh, a to b is very very small. So that's basically what f of uh, x delta x, right? And delta x is b minus a. Okay, yeah. So you can do the same thing for the other line segments here. So the f here is a vector field. If f is a vector field, then technically it should change as you're going from p to p1 at here, right? But however, because it's so small, so I can consider this f as a constant as going from p to p1. Okay, is that clear? So then I can I can call this f. Let's say maybe it's constant. Take this p x to that. Just x y z here. Okay, just x y z. So that f is a constant. Okay, going from here to here. Dot this guy. Okay, it's a constant going from here to here. Dot this delta r. That's basically the first line integral c1. And then you will have the second line integral. Okay. For uh, for the for the rest of them, okay. So so just basically do the same thing here, okay. Just basically do the same thing. Then in the end, okay. So this is where I'm gonna skip the detail now. In the end, okay, you're gonna use this uh, concept of the partial derivative, okay, because in the end you're gonna divide this one by delta a, right, which is equal to delta x delta y, okay. Yeah. So in the end, I know this is not very clear here, but it's going to take a while to uh, to write this whole thing out. Okay. In the end, what we're going to get is this curl f dot this k hat will just simply equal to a okay, partial n over partial x minus partial m over partial y. So where's the n m from? That's the vector field. This is a vector field. Okay. So this is basically the key hat component. Okay. This is basically the key hat component. Okay. So curl f dot key hat equal to this. So where is my curl f? This is curl f here. And curl f dot key hat, this key hat component is this. Okay, is this. Alright, so similarly you can also find that curl f dot i hat, okay, and which is partial p over partial y minus partial n over partial z, okay. And the curl f dot g hat equal to this partial m over z minus partial p over partial x. Okay, there. So that's the three components of the curl f here. Okay, that's three components. This is actually basically uh, what I showed you in the previous lecture. Okay, in the previous lecture. So the curl basically to the curl. F, let's if I write everything out. So curl F okay, equal this component. So basically I'm writing again. I hat G hat. key hat. Okay, so that's curl f. Okay. So curl f is a vector and it's a vector basically it's a, it's a vector telling us a story of uh, whether the at certain location of this vector field, original vector field f, whether there's going to be a rotation or not. Okay. That's basically curl f right here. Okay. And uh, if I make a few comments right here, okay, can I make a few comments? And number one common is of course as a vector, okay. And so the curl f, okay, it describes 
Okay, the rotation of the vector field. So there's a little uh, little uh, danger here regarding this rotation, and I'll, I'll I'll show you what it is here. Okay, yeah. So, but the first of all, it tells us basically the rotation of the vector field is here. Second of all, okay, uh, magnitude. Magnitude of the curl F. Okay, so magnitude of curl F tell us basically it's it's the maximum circulation. Okay, is the max circulation. Okay, that's max circulation at certain point. So here's a vector field. Here's a point. And then curl F tell me is the maximum curve circulation around that at that point with that direction. But however, uh, if you if you uh, hold your uh, paddle wheel at a different orientation other than this curl F direction, then the circulation or the rotation won't be the maximum as the curl F itself. Is that good? You know, here's the maximum direction, right? But if I hold my paddle wheel other than this direction, maybe the other direction, then it's not going to rotate as fast as the curl F direction. Okay? Yeah. So that's the magnitude, right? And so, the, of course, then you will see the direction, right? The direction of the curl F, right, is, is basically the direction of the max, this direction is the, is the axis of the rotation. Okay. So just remember two things. Curl F tells us the rotation of the field. The magnitude of the curl F tells us the ma maximum, uh, the maximum rotation at a certain point in the vector field, and the direction of that is the axis of the rotation. Okay. Yeah. And if some people tell you, okay, what about the other direction at that point? Okay, then you just use what? The curl F dot that direction. Okay. So that's basically what happens. Now, um, I have a couple of examples here. Um, now, before we go into an example here, okay? This is a formula for curl F here, right? This is formula for curl F. Now, if, if, uh, if you compare this, this formula, okay, if you compare this formula curl F, okay, with the del cross F, okay, and that's basically why they, you will find they are the same thing, okay? So this is why sometimes when you see when you write curl F, you can write as del cross F, and this is what i hat g hat k hat d over dx d over dy and d over dz, and then this is m and p. Yeah. So this is where it is from here. So technically, uh, this formula has to be derived based on this that the little rectangle things. Okay, doing some approximations. Okay, so calculation of a curve f is quite easy. Okay, quite easy. And uh, but it, but it, I think it, what you need to do is you need to understand okay the physical meaning of this curl f here. Okay, particularly when you learn uh, fluid mechanics. Okay, and also in electromagnetic uh, field. Okay, uh, this 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 symbols here you're going to use that quite a bit. Okay, yeah. So here are some examples of this vector field. Those are vector fields here. Okay. So, for example, the first vector field is represented using this, second one is this, the third one, and the fourth one here, right? Yeah. Now, what happens is, when you look at this vector field, okay, when you calculate, basically, when you calculate this del cross F for each one of them, okay, cross for each one of them, for the first one here, okay, for the A here, okay, for the A, it's zero. Okay, well, a is zero. Okay, it's actually uh, kind of easy because you can see that there's basically no rotation there, right? Yeah. And the, th the second one here is not going to be zero. This second one here actually, uh, let's calculate the second one here. Okay. Yeah. The second one is 
uh, here's negative uh, c ne neg negative c negative c y plus uh, c x here, right? So maybe maybe let's uh, make it simple here. Let's just let's just see f equal to negative y hat plus x g hat. Let's let's try to calculate this curl of this guy here. Okay? Yeah. So according to uh, my formula, a uh, curl is del cross f. This is the curl. Okay, this is the curl here, okay. and uh, we're going to calculate this one. This is a 2D field. Okay, if I plug it into plug it into this one here or uh, this formula here, okay, this formula here, as you can see, uh, m n p. So there's no p component, and m n the component is not a function of z. So the first second term uh, components going to be zero, right? Going to be zero. So you're only going to have this third component right here. But but if you calculate using the formula, it's going you're going to get the same thing, okay? So basically, let's try it. So curl f f here is ne negative y here and x here and zero at here. Right? So try this uh, determinant, right? So what are you going to get? So there's not going to be uh, i hat component. There's only key component. So key component meaning uh, the uh, partial. See, this is partial x x right. So partial x x minus. So minus. There's another minus here. So there should be a, become a plus here. <coughs> yeah. Anybody you know? I'll just write as minus first, and then minus it here, <coughs> and k hat. Okay. Yeah. K hat. So this is one. This is negative one. Negative negative one become positive. So altogether, it's a two k hat, right? Two k hat. Okay. So this for this vector field. Okay, for this vector field here, there is a rotation because it's not zero. And what we calculate is a is a curl at arbitrary location, right? So which means if I pick any point, if I pick any point inside this vector field, pick any point here, what is the curl? It's all the same, which is 2 key hat. Okay? So now if uh, you actually if you use your right hand rule here, okay? You use the rule, you curve up the curve for this uh, vector fields here, where does the thumb points to? Yeah, which which is the positive z axis, right? Yeah. So Back to this physical meaning of the curl f. If, if I'm not calculate the curl f is this, so the magnitude two represents the rotation. Basically, represents angular velocity. Okay, but this is not an angular velocity here. Okay, this is a proportional to the angular velocity. It's actually this is actually twice as much as the angular velocity. Okay, yeah. And direction of this curl f is the is the axis of rotation. Okay. So basically, then if I if I put if I put a paddle wheel anywhere in the vector fields, okay. So basically, if you put a pinwheel there, it's going to rotate. It doesn't matter where. It's going to rotate at a certain constant angular velocity. Okay. That's that vector field. Was that good? Yeah. Similarly for this one and this one, you can you can you can try to calculate okay them separately. So I'll, I'll uh, give you the answer of this uh, of this one that are here. Okay. For this uh, C, okay, del cross F, okay. So C here is more of like a a river, but it's not exactly a river, but it's basically they call the laminar flow. There's a shear. Basically, you can see there's a direction here, there's a direction here, right? So this is there's a shear between these two layers. Okay. Because of the existence of the shear, the curl is not going to be zero. So if you calculate using the formula, uh, you should get okay, uh, curl f equal to negative k hat. Okay, negative k hat. Does that make sense? If I let's say imagine right, if I plug in a sort of a stick uh, uh, into this vector field, so what happens is 
you know, one push the other side, the other push the other side, so it's going to rotate, right, like this. So into the uh, direction is into the pages, right? Yeah. For the, thir for the third one, now this is an interesting one here, this one here. Now look at this guy here, right? Does the vector field look rotating to you or not? It does, right? It does, okay? But if I calculate, this is a vector field, okay? This is a vector field. But if I calculate this del cross f, okay, it actually turned out to be zero, okay? Uh, other than, right, because we're not going to consider this uh, a zero, zero point origin here. So this is actually, this is actually a vector field called the whirlpool. So basically, if you uh, uh, fill your, your, uh, your tank with a, with the water, okay, then you unplug it, okay, then you watch this rotation of the water, basically it's just getting away, right? That's, that, that's the vector here, see, you can see now, you see, the, the water rotates slower on the outside, but getting faster and faster on the inside here. At the origin, you're supposed to get a maximum, infinite. Right, and an infinite here, but of course, no, that's just approximation, right? Yeah. This is basically a whirlpool effect here. Now, this is this looks like it's a rotating here, right? Looks like it's rotating here, but however, when you plug in, okay, let's see a stick into this one here, it's not the stick will rotate around this axis, but the stick itself, okay, basically the stick will gonna rotate like this, okay. But the stick itself is gonna not gonna experience any rotation like this. Okay. Now, other, other than the middle. Yeah, yeah, the middle one is sort of a, uh, the uh, infinite here, so we, we're gonna exclude that the middle points there. Okay. Yeah. You see the point here? Yeah, so this is basically if uh, there's a uh, animation of here from uh, a wiki. So this is a rotational field. You can you see the particle here? You see that uh, white line, the axis. The axis rotates, right? The axis rotates. That's called a rigid body rotation. Basically, when 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 your rigid body rotates, it's rotating about itself, and that's basically called a rotation. But you see the the the, the bottom here, the vertical line there, that doesn't rotate. Even if even even this uh, uh, although this this particle itself is rotating about uh, the center axis. Yeah, so basically there's two things, right? One is rotating about a certain axis, and the other is whether it has a self-rotation or not. So like Earth, okay? Yeah. So the curl, okay, the curl, what the curl tells us is it's not the rotation about this axis. It's actually rotation about its own axis there. Okay? Now that's basically the, the tricky part here. So in fluid mechanics, this is called uh, vorticity. Okay. So when you have a, this kind of uh, vector, this is called a, a vortex here, basically. Okay. Yeah. So they don't call it curl; they call it the vorticity. Okay? But it's the same thing. Del cross the v. Okay. Good. Okay. Now calculation-wise about the curl, I think it's pretty straightforward. This just the determinant of this. Really nothing tricky out of here, right? Yeah. So just remember the formula, that's enough. <coughs> so that's curl, okay? That's curl. Let's take a look at an example here. So here an example, this is basically a sort of fluid flow uh, example here, okay? So this one here actually is very much like uh, uh, this field, very much like this field. Okay. You see, for this vector field, if, you, if we consider this a, a fluid flow here, so there's a, a higher velocity as it's going out of ring here, or going outside here, right? And a lower velocity here. Okay. For this particular case here, it's very similar like that, okay? Yeah. So uh, everywhere is rotating at the omega here. So then this is basically what we're going to calculate. But let's calculate this uh, here. So R first four, okay? If I pick any point okay, in the field, and R, right? That's the coordinates. That's the coordinates of the point. Then R is uh, represented position vector from there to there. So R is x, y. Okay, that's R. Okay. Now if I use uh, if I use these uh, uh, polar coordinates, so it's going to be R cos theta and R sine theta. Okay, R sine theta. Okay. Then this is R, right? Then uh, V 
is dr is r dot. Okay, v is r dot, basically the dr over dt. Okay, yeah. Now, if, if, if you watch the particle motion in here, okay, watch the particle motion. What is r? r? r is this portion, right? r is this portion. Is there a if I watch this one, is there a change of r for this guy here? There's no, right? There's no change of r. So when you take this r dot of this guy here, so this r is not going to change. So basically, r is a, a not a time function. So the only time function is theta. Okay? Yeah. So then what we get here is um, basically the, the time derivative of this two quantity is going to be, okay, so r is a constant, and I'll just take the r out. Okay? Then theta is a time quantity. So cosine theta first, negative sine theta. And then d theta over dt, which is theta dot. Yeah, right? We think we, uh, we did such kind of exercise when we were uh, doing this uh, parametric equation. The second one here is cosine theta and theta dot. Okay? So that's v. Right, that's v. Okay. Then I'm going to take the theta dot out of it and put an r back into it. So negative r sine theta and r cos theta. Okay. Okay. And what is r sine theta, r cosine theta? Back to the back to this Cartesian coordinates. This negative r sine theta is y. And this r cosine theta is x. Right? Is x. Okay. So the vector field, which is let's say this the velocity of the fluid flow, the velocity of fluid flow is this guy. Okay. And what is the theta dot? Theta dot is omega. Right. Theta dot is omega. So if this whole vac if this whole fluid is flowing at a constant velocity omega, that's basically the vector field. Right? The vector fields here. So you see this vector field, that's essentially the same kind of vector field as depicted over here. Right? Yeah. So sometimes those lines that are here, okay, those lines here are called streamlines. Okay, those cluster of lines called streamlines here. So you can easily calculate this del v. Okay, you can easily calculate del v based on this, which is going to be equal to 2 omega k hat. Okay, 2 omega k hat. So the curl del, not del v, right? del cross v. So the curl gave me the 2 omega k hat, which is twice as much as this angular velocity of this uh, fluid flow. Okay. Yeah. So in planar, this is, actually a, this is actually a general observation. In planar case, planar field, in planar field, the, the curl of that field, gave, the magnitude of that, gave me twice as much as this angular velocity of that field at a certain location. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's basically curl. Okay, any questions? All good. Yeah. Okay. So take a look at the uh, particular lecture notes. I think if you're interested in terms of the proving part here, okay. And I think you skipped quite a bit of in terms of proving there. But uh, uh, there is, you know, that I think I went over that already. So we're going to skip that. Okay, so now we learned the curl. So the next thing is, what we're going to learn is, okay, um, Green theorem. So I'll explain what the Green theorem first. Okay, and then where is that from? Okay. Well, when when del cross this f equal to zero, okay, when del cross f equal to zero, and I'm asking you to calculate the line integral. Okay, so if I ask you to calculate the line integral, now if you recall from the previous lecture, the shortcut is you don't need to calculate the line integral, and you can calculate the what? Come again? Exactly. Right? You can use the so-called fundamental theorem of calculus for line integral. To so if this is zero, meaning this f must be from a potential function f. And then this line integral will be simply just f of p1 minus f of p2. Right? That's uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. Now the only question here is, how about if this guy is not zero? 
So when it's zero, this is conservative field. Okay. So what about this curl is not zero? Then I'm still going to require to calculate this line integral, right? So well, I guess you're going to have to calculate line integral as uh, as euro, right? Okay. However, there's a, an, another way of doing this line integral. Now. So this is basically the green theorem. Instead of calculating the line integral, I'm going to turn it okay, into a double integral. Okay, that's this green theorem. So this is basically the theorem here. Okay. When this is not zero, so the theorem says this. Okay. If C okay, is okay, oriented okay, counterclockwise, okay, viewing from top. Okay. So C now we're sort of having a concept called orientation. Um, in this particular case, we orient the C counterclockwise viewing him from the top. And what we call this is this is a positive orientation. Okay? Positive orientation. Okay. Then and also F okay, is a vector field. Okay. Which is defined, of course, defined okay, in the region R. Well, I should say C is an enclosed one. Okay, C is a closed uh, closed curve. Okay, C is a closed curve. And F is a vector field defined in the region R enclosed by C. Okay, yeah. Then this circulation calculation, okay, okay, this circulation calculation is equivalent to this to this one here. Is equivalent to this, so that's green theorem. And next quiz, you I think uh, the one of the question is just exercise in the green theorem, right? Okay. <coughs> so let's come back to this again. Okay. Yeah. If C is a closed curve and it's oriented counterclockwise, viewing from the top. Okay. So basically, that's the direction you're walking around the C here. Okay. The direction walking. Then the circulation around this curve C. Okay, it's equivalent to calculating this double integral. And the double integral here, the integrand, is this. Integral over which region? Over this region R, which is the, the region enclosed by the curve C. Okay? That's basically green theorem. Now, in terms of proof, uh, it could be very easy, it could be very uh, difficult. But So there are detailed proof in the textbook, but I think there is one very simple way of looking at this proof that here is this. Now remember this definition of the curl F, right? Now maybe I'll write it down here. What is the definition of curl F? Curl F dot a certain n hat okay, equal a limit delta A go to zero. Top is a line integral. And delta, let's see, delta C here. Top is a line integral. And bottom is the delta a. Right, this is the definition of a line integral, uh, a curve, right? The curve, okay? The curve here. Okay. So, if f is a planar field, okay? If f is a planar field, so we know the curl f is actually going to give me basically um, a vector perpendicular to the x y plane. Now, then what happens is if I change this n hat to k hat. Okay, change this to n hat to k hat. Okay. 
So we know that what, what what's that gonna give us? This key hat is gonna be actually is this term here. Right? Is this term. Okay. So what's going on in here? Right? This is the curl F dot k hat. Okay, so this is curl f dot k hat here. Okay, yeah. See, now if this is curl f dot k hat, then if I replace this quantity, okay, if I replace this quantity with this limit, if I replace this quantity with the limits here, okay, see what happened? If I replace this quantity with the limit, what's the dx dy? This is basically dA, right? It's dA here. And with delta A goes to, the, goes to zero, this is basically a dAA here. Okay? So when, when you plug this one here, you, you get back this line integral here. Right? Yeah. That's a sort of a not very rigorous proof here. Basically, you're looking at the definition of curl, you can see how the green, the green theorem works. Right? Green theorem works. Okay? But however, just look, just this formula, okay, that's not very bad, okay. okay. So the the question may be, okay, calculate the line integral uh, of this one using Green theorem. So all you need to do now is to worry about this. Okay, how do I find the region R, which is enclosed by this uh, uh, C, and uh, what what would be this integrand here based on this partial n over x, partial m over partial y, and the rest of the work. As a typical double integral, which you have practiced numerous uh, examples, right? Okay, yeah. So let me show you an example right here, <coughs> and you will see how the Green theorem works. Okay, so f equal to F equal to this, and C, it's a unicircle okay, at 2, 0. Okay, it's a unicircle at 2, 0. So if I uh, draw it out here, so this is the C at here. Okay, and this is 2. And this is, uh, if this is unicircle, so this is a 1, and this is going to be 3 here, right? It's going to be 3, okay? So you look at the vector field, F, that's a 2D vector, and okay? that's a 2D field, okay? using the xy plane. Okay? And we're trying to calculate, asking you to calculate the line integral, okay? Line integral. Okay, so this act, if, if you calculate this line integral using regular approach, you know, the, the traditional way of a calculate line integral, you're going to get the parametric equation for the curve, right? And plug it into the x, y, z here. And then find the limits of this uh, t, okay, and then you do all the kind of line integrals, right? Yeah, okay, that, that's also doable. However, um, if, if you do that way, basically, you're going to have to Basically, this is a unit circle, so this is x squared, and this is x minus 2 squared plus y squared equal to, uh, equal to 1. And this is this, the curve C uh, equation. Okay, So then you're going to have to x equal to uh, cosine theta plus 2, and y equal to sine theta. So that's the parametric equation, or t, no matter. Okay? That's the parametric equation. Is that good? Yeah. Okay, so now, but I'm not going to use this approach here, so we're going to calculate using the Green theorem. Okay? So the Green theorem says uh, this guy equal to R partial N over partial X, M over Y, and DX, DY. That's Green theorem, right? Okay? And what is R? R is basically this circle here, right? This circle. So let's calculate this partial n over x minus partial y over a uh, partial m over y first. Okay. 
So in this particular case, what is my M? This is M. This is N here. Okay. okay so that's a, those are very simple partial derivative. Okay. So you, you plug this quantities. Okay. N over here. Y over here. Right. Calculate this is a partial derivative. Okay. So if you calculate the partial if you calculate the partial derivative, you end up with just x at here. So the final exam, we're not going to have a dedicated question on partial derivative, but you see uh, there are many situations you, you need to be very comfortable or very proficient in terms of partial derivative. Okay? Yeah. <coughs> so this is x here. So now I'm going to plug the x over into this uh, formula. So r and x and uh, dx dA, let's just call it dA here. We don't really need that uh, dx dA. Okay, so that's basically this double integral. Okay. okay, so then the next step, I guess, if you're if you're going to uh, calculate this double integral, uh, there are uh, different ways we learn. We can use what the Cartesian coordinates. We can also use polar coordinates, right? But it's actually this is actually a sort of a challenging double integral. Uh, you can try. So if I use uh, uh, polar coordinates, what do I do? I'm going to basically draw a reading lines right out of this uh, origin here. So first contact give me r min, second contact give me r max, right? Yeah. And then we're going to sweep this reading line okay, to find okay, the angles, the sandwiching of bounds this region r. Okay. But if you look at this, uh, the what I draw here, what is r min? What is r max? Is, this is actually quite quite not so simple to calculate, right? What about the theta sandwiching these two? It's not that easy too, right? You can you can tell that in, uh, immediately, right? Yeah. So over here, there we do have a little shortcut for this particular case here. Now, if you recall that in previous lecture, we were talking about one of this uh, uh, one of the quantity application of double integral is this. Uh, it's the uh, uh, center of mass for this uh, uh, thin plate. So center mass for the x quantity is this one over the mass, okay, okay, double integral x delta dA. That's the formula, right? That's the formula. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's say this is a plate I'm talking about. Okay, this is a plate, and I'm trying to calculate this x bar for this plate. Okay, at this location. So, and uh, let's say consider delta is one. Okay, then this is basically one over the mass, okay, r x d a, right, d a here, okay. So now you see this guy here. That's exactly what this guy, right? That this guy. So which means this quantity is basically can be seen as x x location, the center mass location multiplied by the mass. By the mass here. Okay, so what is the mass then? Mass is the total area multiplied by density. So what is the what is the area of this circle? It's pi r squared, and r is one. So multiply by one. So that's mass is pi, right? Okay. So what about the x bar? X bar is the center of the mass. Yeah, exactly, it's two. So Two pi. Okay. So are you considering the density to be one? Yeah. 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 If the density is not one, then it still won't work, right? Yeah. Okay. So here, this is basically the short. But anyway, um, overall, right? The way that this double integral that works, uh, the line integral to, to 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 double integral, okay, that's the the typical procedure here. Okay, there's really no trick at it here. Really no trick. Okay. It's 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 a purely calculating for two partial derivative and then, then boils down to this uh, scales of double integrals. Okay. Any questions? So far so good. Yeah. So uh, there are a lot of a uh, lot of con as I said the last few lecture actually the last four or five from last week okay many uh, comments is uh, there are too many things to digest but that's how it goes basically everything that you learned from the beginning till now it's all application now right 
this this double integral and uh, uh, triple integral, and then apply to the integrals in the vector field. Okay, curl, and which is the next one? We're going to talk about divergence. Okay, yeah, there's another vector here called divergence set here. And also in the next lecture, okay, which is I'm going to be focusing on the surface integral. And I hope everybody can be here. You know, that lecture is going to be very overwhelming in the past. Okay, uh, we're going to have a, a one lecture, and I'm going to, I'm going to try to cover at least uh, 20 pages of lecture notes. Right, just to give you a heads up. Because why? You know, because why we can go go a little bit uh, faster? Because at this stage, you know, you think of it, these are new, but actually they're not new anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because why they are not new? You look at all these things here. All the vector operations are they new? They're not, right? Yeah. What the new things is basically just a, a new definition. You look at the definition of the curl. It's, it's new, but regarding the calculus and Dale cross is that new? That's not new, right? Yeah. And that particularly this, the next one, divergence. Okay, it's not new either. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. First of all, just a little or origin where the divergence is from, first of all, okay? Yeah. Now, if I have a vector field, let's see if I, if I go back to this guy here, okay? Let's see this is a vector field, right? This is vector field. Now, if I connect, basically, if I connect uh, those curves, okay? If I connect those curves like this, okay? okay. So, uh, make sure that those are vectors are tangent to the curve that you created here. Okay? Yeah. So uh, create the curve and make sure all the curves are tangent to that. And those curves here, uh, what we call is a streamline. Okay? The streamlines here. Okay? Now, when you connect all the curves here, particularly let's, let's say you learned uh, in the first year, when you have a point charge, right? You have a point charge, and the electric field is what? It's a Going out, right? It's readingly going out of this uh, a point charge. Okay. Yeah. So in that particular case, you know, if I have a point charge here, okay, and then if I if I do the same thing, I'm I'm almost like uh, having a streamlines uh, like this, right? So going out of this point charge. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. So those streamlines, okay, those lines of sometimes you also need the, the direction. So the streamline has two things. One's a curve, one's a direction. So it, it represents the direction of streamlines, streamlines there. Okay? Yeah. So they're actually, you know, you look at the streamline, they are actually not there. Okay? So physically, it's not like it has a steel uh, tentacles, you know, reaching out from the point charge. Okay? So they are not actually there. However, you know, I draw it out here. So what it appears to us is there's something there, isn't it? Right? There's something there. So then, if there's something there, and uh, let's say if I take a small region around here, okay? So basically this is a planar case, and I take a small region here. Then the natural question is, how many of the lines will go over that small area? Is that right? Yeah. So those lines that are here, those streamlines here. So those streamlines. Okay. Sometimes it's also called <coughs> flux. Okay. So can be also called flux lines. So you can see now, basically the idea of the flux right here, or the streamline, right? So the flux. Okay. Flux is what is is a is an amount of a something. Okay, it's a model of something, okay, passing okay, through a surface, a small surface. Okay. So there's a stream flux lines. Uh, more precisely in a unit time. Okay. So if I have this surface over here, then how many lines going through the surface in a unit time? Right, that gave me this idea basically the flux. Okay, so if the if the vector fields here, there may be two lines going through this, and over here there may be ten lines going this. Then what that tells me basically, the location right here has a stronger field, right, than here. 
right? That's the application of this flux or the or the streamlines, right? Yeah. So what we're seeing is something here. So it could be anything, you know. Uh, if uh, representing the uh, the flow of a fluid, so that's basically the velocity field of, of the fluid, right? And maybe it could be anything. Maybe it's uh, meatballs or bananas falling down from the sky, right? So that's a vector field, okay? Yeah, that's actually, you know, basically how many of the meatballs and bananas are going to fall over this unit surface, right? That's, that's something. That's a flux, okay? Yeah. You know, like the movie, yeah. Okay, so more precisely, okay, the flux is defined as this. If it's an electric field, then it's basically the number of electric vector fields passing through this unit surface. Okay? Yeah. So it's it's defined as a rate of a flow, okay, rate of a flow of a, of a quantity okay, per unit area. Okay, per unit area and uh, Per unit uh, time, okay. So rate of flow is basically something per seconds, right? And then per unit area. So overall, the the the, the dimension of a flux, right? It will be basically that quantity, okay? Dot, okay? Uh, or divided by time. And then multiply, uh, divided also divided by okay, the uh, 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 per unit area, so area. Okay, so if you're using time as seconds, uh, area as a meter square, so just replace the seconds and uh, that as a, as a meter square here. And the quantity, uh, who knows? Maybe it's a uh, mass, right? Kilogram, okay, or maybe it's something else, okay? Yeah, it's water and then it's kilogram, right? Okay. So, but that's the flux definition, okay? So how much of flux passing through a surface, okay, a very small unit area, that indicates this, this, the, uh, how strong the field is, right? Yeah. So then there comes this basic idea now. Okay, so if flux is something passing through a, a surface in a unit time, okay, then how about uh, the, the, the previous case? What about the point? You know, and you know, basically, what what about if I if I'm interested in not really a small area, you know, area over here? What about if I'm interested in right at that point, right? How about the idea of the flux right at the point, right? That's basically uh, the, the next thing here, where the divergence from. So at the point, okay, the flux basically becomes idea called flux density. Okay, right. You're talking about points concept. It's a flux density. And then, technically, if I calculate the flux density, then the flux density will be basically that will be so flux okay, density. Okay, it, it it basically will equal to the net flux okay, over unit volume. Okay. So density is this, right? Net flux over unit volume. Okay. So unit volume maybe it's delta v. Okay. And here net flux. So for the time being, I'll just use a net flux here. Okay. And the next, actually, once we learn surface integral, I can replace the net flux with a surface integral. All right? Yeah. So so net flux over this area. Okay. Divided by this, uh, uh, the uh, unit volume, unit volume basically uh, is uh, uh, because you have a passing through this air time over unit time. So then it's as if there is a unit area after this unit time. Okay. Then, then divergence, okay, the idea of the divergence, okay, it's basically this formula here, okay, this net flux over delta V. Okay, over delta v. Yeah. So more precisely, actually, it's a limit when delta v goes to zero. That's divergence. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So divergence equal to net flux okay, <coughs> divided by the delta v as delta v goes to zero. It's a point. It's a point concept. Okay, point concept.
Now, how do I calculate this one here? Again, we're going to have to make use of a certain, uh, certain approximation now. So, uh, what you do is, okay, so we're not going to go into detail. What you do is, you take a box, okay, you take a box like this, okay, center around a certain point P, okay, then there is a certain vector field maybe in this uh, 3D space, okay. Now, according to this definition, divergence is the net flux, okay, or this net net ve uh, net vector field out of this volume here. This this is delta v here, okay? Yeah. So what we do is, then what we do is, okay. So how many of the flux out of this out of this box here? It basically, how many side of this box? Uh, three, uh, six, right? Yeah. The six sides of this box. So uh, the, the, the flux or the vector field out of the box is the flux out of this six side of the surfaces, right? Yeah. Then you add the six sides together, you'll get this uh, divergence, basically. Okay? And as delta V goes to zero. Okay? So take a look at the lecture notes regarding that. Uh, in the end, you end up with a very, very simple okay, formula for uh, divergence. So del... Okay, so divergence, if I use small d here, we call it uh, divergence vector f. Hey, previously is curl f. Now we have a divergence f. That equal to del dot f. Okay, that equal to del dot f. So divergence is a scalar quantity. Okay, it's a scalar quantity. That equal to Okay, well, del, we, we learned del, and we know the f, f, let's say, is m and p. Okay, so that basically equal to partial m over partial x plus partial n over partial y and plus partial p over partial z. Okay, so that's divergence. Is that good? Yeah, so you look at this formula here, that's really nothing new in here, right? Yeah, but this is sort of new here, okay? Now, the physical meaning of divergence, back to this here. So the physical meaning of divergence here is, is telling us sort of a, a flux out of this point or not, right? Whether there's flux, if you consider the flux of anything, so water or, 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 or something else, so basically the calculation of this one here basically tells you is there going to be something coming out of here or going into it, okay, or nothing, okay, right. So, for example, right, <clears throat> basically if I have a del dot f equal to zero, okay, if I got something equal to zero here, okay, if I got something equal to zero, it, it's basically the idea is there's nothing going in and out of it, right, yeah. So let's say maybe uh, the case like this, maybe the other case is uh, del dot f, okay? okay, not zero, okay, so not zero here. Okay. So let, let me give you an example here. <coughs> if I have a certain small area here, and then I have, okay, a flow like this, okay, a flow like this, then you look this area, what's going into and out of it is pretty much the same thing, right? So then for this particular case, that divergence will be zero, okay, in this case here. <coughs> okay. However, maybe what you have here, you have a you have a you have a source. This is not a source, you have a so called sink at here. Okay. This is a sink here. So everything goes into this wormhole, okay? Everything goes into this point. And at the same time, there's something passing through it, right? Passing through it here. Yeah. So what would you expect for this one here? This del dot f, what do you think? Is this going to be greater than zero or is it going to be less than zero? So there's, there's, there's more going into it or going out of it? There's more... In this, going into it, right? Yeah. When there's more going into it, this guy will be less than zero. Okay. So divergence basically tells us it's a, it's a, it's 
how much is okay going out of it okay it's going out of this volume here right yeah okay right remember the definition is the net flux out of that okay yeah so apparently if I have a case like this if I have point chart up on a point chart if I have a, a source okay if I have a source like this at here okay so apparently this one here will be greater than zero okay because there's only it's only out of it right positive okay so net out is greater than zero so all you need to do all you remember now for a divergence is okay divergence is it, it represents okay it represents this this density of the fluid okay and it represents basically how much is out of a certain point okay the strong uh, how strong it is okay so that's a curl that's divergence right it's curl and a divergence there any questions all good yeah I uh, don't think I have surface, but but uh, before we uh, uh, before I let you go there, okay, uh, just one small thing that I hear, okay. So del f greetings vector, okay, greeting vector. So how about this del dot del f? Okay, so del dot del f. So del dot, what does del dot do? Divergence, right? We just learned del dot is basically calculate divergence. So del dot del f give me the divergence of the greeting field. Okay. Now if you use del dot apply to this formula to this uh, vector here, you're gonna end up with okay. A second order okay. partial derivative. Okay. Yeah. Yes, this is called basically Laplace. So this guy here, you can use that as so called del squared f. Okay, del squared f. So this del squared f is called the Laplace operator. Okay, a plus operator. So when you let this guy equal to zero, okay, when you let this go to zero, that's called the Laplacian equation. Yeah, that's another very important equation in fluid mechanics. But anyway, so, so far you see, just one le lecture we actually had a three different operators: curl, divergence, and uh, Laplace operator. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.